I think that L'Oreal really wants to rule the beauty world. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to today's chat video. So thanks for tuning in, and I want to chat with you about something that I've recently learned and that shocked me a little bit. Well, that's not just shocking and very surprising, that was just like, oh no, really? And those uh, news are that L'Oreal wants to buy Mugler or Mugle. You tell me how you pronounce the name of Terry Mugler. That's basically such an iconic brand that um, created revolutionary fragrances such as Alien and Angel. And uh, those perfumes are bestsellers around the world. They are signature scents of so many women and they really, in my personal opinion, revolutionized the perfumery. Those are such um, iconic scents. They're just like one of their kind. And even though I can't stand both of them, that doesn't mean that they are not, um, you know, <laughs> not great. Um, and Mugler really creates interesting perfumes, in my personal opinion, even though I'm not the fan of their perfumes. This is not my favorite brand. I don't like Angel, I don't like Alien, I don't even really like their Aura or Aura perfume, which is better than Alien and Angel, in my personal opinion, uh, to my taste, but still, I'm not the biggest fan. Um, I don't own those perfumes. But I mean, like, they are interesting. When they create something and launch a brand new perfume, you can expect that it's going to be creative at some point, there is going to be quality, and that perfume will have a character. I find that those three things are very um, characteristic for Mugler, and uh, I was just so uh, angry that L'Oreal buys this brand because the thing is L'Oreal is a big company, a huge beauty concern. They have a lot of makeup brands, they have a lot of beauty brands, a lot of perfume brands belong to them and uh, I just don't like when really huge companies buy smaller creative brands. For example, that's the same thing as um, with Estee Lauder that bought by Killian, Jo Malone, um, Le Labo and so many other great perfume brands and I kind of understand those perfume brands that sell their brands because I can imagine that L'Oreal or Estee Lauder, big huge brands like multi-billionaire companies, they offer a really nice price that the person who owns a brand thinks, oh my god, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I I won't worry about sales, I won't worry about anything. I'll be a millionaire till the end of my days. If that's a smart person and he can deal with money, he can even make a bigger profit out of that, you know, invest in something new and start something cool and uh, that totally makes sense that they sell their brands, in my personal opinion. I am sure I do the same because, you know, when you have a huge price and I hope that those companies who buy these smaller brands, they pay well. I really, really hope so that um, their price is very fair and uh, you know, when you get a million or a few millions um, for your brand, you are able to start something new and something creative, something that you have been always wanting to. Um, that's that's all right to sell those brands um, and to buy those brands. But my personal problem with that is that um, I've noticed that, for example, with Killian and Jo Malone that were bought by Estee Lauder, they started creating very mainstream perfumes after they were bought and that totally makes sense once again because um, when you have this 
interesting company that people really really like that is quite popular like Killian yeah by Killian they have very attractive uh, luxurious packaging and um, the quality in terms of scent is there for sure and then um, Estee Lauder owns it and they want to make a lot of profit out of it so they save on the ingredients they save on the creativity they are going for something safe you know safe and um, I find that that is the dangerous path when you just start creating very mainstream perfumes and that is when niche is turning designer slash mainstream you know what I'm talking about and I hate that Estee Lauder or L'Oreal, they don't really captivate the spirit of the brand, but they're just trying to make it like to sell more. And you know, if you want to sell more, you want to save somewhere, so you'll really make a good, nice profit in the end. And um, yeah, I don't like that because I wish Jo Malone, for example, that belongs to Estee Lauder now, had more creative perfumes as they did in the past. And I think a lot of people. Um, have similar feelings about Jo Malone that really changed um, throughout the years and um, that's the problem like with Estee Lauder in particular because they started buying a lot of niche you know like these indie brands um, and uh, I don't like when indie and niche brands turn into this mainstream trend I don't like that and with L'Oreal it's something a little bit different because I'm not sure if they're owning anything niche or indie and um, I know that um, they have Lancome and uh, Yves Saint Laurent as well as uh, Victor and Rolf uh, Bioterm and many other um, brands that belong to them and I've noticed that for example these three brands Victor and Rolf, um, Yves Saint Laurent and um, Lancome they have three perfumes that share a lot of similarities and from Lancome that is of course La Vie Abel, um, if I mispronounce the name, please don't get angry if you speak French. Um, I don't speak French. I find it is a beautiful language, but unfortunately I can't pronounce it physically. It is very hard for me. So, yeah. Um, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You have an image on the screen just in case you have no clue what I'm trying to say here. Um, so, La Vie La Belle, um, then... Um, Flower Bomb from Victor and Rolf and of course Mont Paris from Yves Saint Laurent. Those three perfumes have a very similar vibe. I'm not sure if the brands uh, were sold to the um, L'Oreal and then under creative direction of L'Oreal those three perfumes were created or maybe some of them were created previously but all the reformulations, all the flankers of those perfumes, they have very similar vibe. They're sweet, floral and very very intensely opulent and that all sounds just great but when you smell all three perfumes you can definitely identify similarity that they are very similar that um, they are not necessarily identical but when you wear three perfumes on your skin after a certain time you'll definitely smell the same scent uh, or a very similar scent. It is sweet, just like very floral, just slightly fruity. One is fruitier, another is sweeter. The third one is, I don't know, something else. But all in all, they create very similar perfumes. And that is my biggest problem ever. That I go to the store, I smell designer perfumes, and they all smell similar and at some point even identical. And that once again makes sense if um, all these brands belong to the same company and they kind of have maybe like a body uh, of a perfume, then they just add. Uh, a slightly different uh, variation of a fruitier core to one and floral core to another but like the body the main structure is, is the same that's my assumption those are my personal thoughts maybe that's not true but I go to the store and I have been complaining about that um, all last year that everything smells so similar and that's like my problem 
if you buy a company just stick to its roof you know what i'm talking about like mugler like they have intense perfumes and if they are gonna start creating some like sort of a shower gel fruity floral scents then you know i'll pass please don't mess mugler up it's a great brand and so is azaro and l'oreal wants to buy too so i'm just saying please just pay a tribute to the beginning of the brand and what it was about just um care about its original concept and then I'm sure that sales are going to be even higher, bigger and profits are going to be enormous. Those were my thoughts. I would like to know your opinion about this topic. You can leave me anything in the comments, questions that you have and I'll be happy to answer them. Ideas for future chatty videos. If you want to know my opinion on some topic, just ask. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you like my chatty videos. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, stay tuned, smell good. And if you want to see my reviews on Mugler perfumes, all the links are going to be down below in the description box. So definitely check it out. And we'll see each other really soon. Bye, guys.